Hey kiddies, it's Trip Feature Tuesday, and this week we continue our epic four-part series, Tom's Friends Hate Him, with supernatural Sandra Bullock movies. To remind everybody, we're doing four videos in which I have to watch three movies with actresses and actors that I don't particularly like because my friends hate me. This week it's Sandra Bullock. I don't know. I've just never bought into her. I, I think that's like a recurring thing with all of these uh, actors and actresses. I just don't buy into what they do. I never believe their characters and or I just don't particularly like them. It's not like I've ever met them. I'm sure they're nice people. Well, except for Shia LaBeouf, who we'll get to him later. But just for whatever reason, I never want to watch movies with them. They are an instant reason for me not to watch a movie. Uh, Sandra Bullock being one of them. I can think of what? Two Sandra Bullock movies that I enjoy, Speed and Demolition Man, but come on, they're Speed and Demolition Man. And I, I guess I, I liked one of them on this triple feature, but I wouldn't say I liked it because of her, I just sort of liked the premise a bit. A bit. Our menu is going to include Practical Magic, The Lake House, and Premonition. I mean, technically speaking, none of these movies are good. Practical Magic is a really sort of terrible and just tonally all over the place. The movie's about Sandra Bullock and uh, uh, still sprightly uh, Nicole Kidman as New England witches who come from a long line of witches, um, such as their aunts, Diane Weist and Stockard Channing. And you know, the f things that they have to deal with, like the, the family curse where who, uh, whatever man they fall in love with will die, as Sandra Bullock's husband does, the, the dude from Royal Pains. The movie is just dumb, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, any movie that starts off with a, you know, heartwarming, charming anecdote about the Salem witch trials and uh, witch hangings is just... <laughs> You don't know what you're doing with your movie, do you? <laughs> it was really wrong and terrible. Because it's like, I mean, the whole point of why it's such a shame and black mark in, you know, an otherwise hideous uh, American history uh, is that because they weren't witches. There were none. It was just, you know, uh, townspeople that were assholes and and burned and killed these women. And then it turns out, oh, but this one actually was. Are you insane? So the movie goes on, and it's just every 90s girl movie cliche, uh, one after another, culminating in the dancing around the kitchen table and uh, singing a song that they're all just getting into because we're just girls. And it's just terrible. Because it's, it's like, I, I just know people are going to look at this movie and get the wrong idea that it's supposed to be somehow empowering because it's women doing things for women. But honest to God, uh, everything about these women's lives revolve around men. With the exception of the two good characters in the movie, uh, Diane Weist and Stocker Channing. If the movie had just been them uh, being sort of, you know, gossipy old biddies who were also witches in this town and just uh, screwing around with everybody in the town, this would have been the greatest movie. Unfortunately, it's not. And they're only in, like, maybe half of the movie. This is just, this is a waste of talent, people. But everything about, every, every problem that Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman run into revolves around a man, getting a man, keeping a man, killing a man, keeping a man they've killed dead... Uh, exercising a man that they've killed twice and is now possessing them because they just can't get over the man. Uh, before you ask, yes, it does pass the Bechtel test in the very beginning, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't repeat that achievement at all throughout the film because they're just always talking about du uh, about dudes. And it ends exactly the way you'd think. Like, the minute little Sandra Bullock makes her wish for an impossible man, you know he's going to show up at the end. And lo and behold, he's there, and hooray. And, I mean, it's just, all of these Sandra Bullock movies are just so lightweight and boring. Admittedly, I've never seen Gravity, and I'm, I'm tempted to see it because I, uh, I love Children of Men. But since it's all just Sandra Bullock, I just have no interest in it. <sighs> Next up, we have The Lake House, and I'm not going to lie, I liked it. 
I was I was very pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed it. Admittedly, the mechanics of the movie are insane. Uh, Keanu Reeves is uh, moved into his old family lake house and uh, is uh, renovating it in 2004. In 2006, Sandra Bullock has moved out of the lake house and somehow they're communicating via letters in the mailbox of this lake house. Uh, him in 2004, she in 2006, and they're all, they're kind of moving forward in time, but, you know, two years apart. Don't try to think about that too hard, because, about the timing and how all that works, because it does, it, in the end, it's not important at all, it's just, it's a long-distance relationship, uh, that they can't get together for reasons X, Y, and Z, it's just X, Y, and Z, or some sort of sci-fi fantasy element. Here's the thing. I really like Keanu Reeves. It was, I think it was watching this movie that I just had to admit. It doesn't matter uh, the movie he's in. I just like him and want to buy into him. And I know that takes, what, 20 legitimate film critic points off of my score, but it's what it is. And so I really just enjoy him as uh, this architect character that's just kind of muddling around his life and dealing with things. He, I, he just sort of sells it to me. And I thought the uh, the relationship with his brother and father, played by Christopher Plummer, who, of course, is never bad, even though he's in several bad movies, Lake House technically being one of them, whereas Sandra Bullock was just kind of off on her own. And it didn't really matter. Like, she has her care, her, uh, her friends and side characters that she's talking about things with. But, you know, you don't really care about them. Other than, uh, I, I like um, her attending, or her boss, for lack of a better term, at the hospital is uh, Shorei... I'm never going to pronounce her name right, I'm so sorry. Uh, Shorei Agadashlu. Yeah, she was in uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, and just has one of my favorite voices. I could listen to her voice forever and be happy. But the romance sort of works. The letters are nice, and they come up with a lot of good gags to get around the fact that it's all, you know, happening in writing. And so they come up with ways for our two main leads to interact before the movie's over. And it's not that bad. Um, what is uh, funny is, well, this is a decent enough triple feature altogether. These last two movies, Lake House of Premonition, actually make a much, much more solid uh, double feature in that both of them uh, end up revolving around uh, saving uh, Sandra Bullock's love interest from a fatal car accident while also involving one of the two uh, main characters from Nip Tuck. Uh, in The Lake House, it's Dylan Walsh playing the kind of boring, uh, not interesting at all uh, foil for Keanu Reeves as, you know, Sandra Bullock's either going to end up with this guy or that guy, because she can't end up alone, because if there's one thing I understand about Sandra Bullock movies now, is that she can't end up without a man. She needs one to fulfill her in life, which is sort of sad. Whereas in Premonition, the dude is Julian McMahon, who I will never, ever, ever forgive for what he did to Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four movies. Ever. In this one, Sandra Bullock has uh, become unstuck in time and is experiencing the uh, last week of her husband Julian McMahon's life in random order, and she's sort of got to figure out what happened, and, uh, as in, what is the sequence of events that led to his uh, death and maybe prevent it. But then she finds out that he's uh, almost cheating on her. Like, they couldn't even give it... It's, they couldn't even have the balls to just make him a cheater. It's, you know, he was on his way. He was thinking about cheating on her, but of course changes his mind. Because, you know, there's no depth to this movie. So, first it's, oh, I have to save him. Oh, do I even want to save him? Oh, what about her marriage? And, oh, God, what's going on? And... This movie, I mean, the sequence of events makes even less sense than The Lake House, and at no point does the movie pass the Who Cares test. Like, you're thrust into worrying about the Sandra Bullock character, and I could, I mean, I, admittedly I'm biased, but if you could tell me why we care about anything that happens to this family, I'd love to hear it. Uh, that said, uh, it's really long. <laughs> It's really boring, and there's, as with most movies, there's just not nearly enough Peter Stormare. 
Um, the only saving grace, and this is a spoiler for a movie that's almost ten years old now, uh, <laughs> when uh, Sandra Bullock cannot uh, ends up getting to the end and not preventing the death of Julian McMahon, it is spectacular. I mean, you you get uh, foreshadowing that like what happened to him cut his own head off because there's a funeral scene where the ca the casket falls out of the hearse and his head goes rolling down the street like a soccer ball. Uh, but then <laughs> it's not only like head decapitated, but everything is exploding and horrible. And now Sandra Bullock's pregnant for <laughs> whatever throwaway reason. And God, uh, we're only halfway through these movies, these terrible, terrible movies. And, you know, at no point did I change my mind on Sandra Bullock. She is just this, the same kind of variation on Sandra Bullock every time. And it, that's not a detraction on her acting ability, because a lot of times actors and actresses are just playing various versions of themselves. But, man, she's just a boring, boring actress on screen. Ugh. And next week it's, it's Julia Roberts. Oh, my God. I'll see you then.